this video, we are going to see how a real-time data engineering project will be created from scratch. This will have all the information right from the first discussion that would ever happen before starting the project until the final piece of work that is done in a more detailed manner. One interesting thing to notice, all the data engineering project tutorials that you have ever watched in any online platform, including mine, does not cover this. But it is a very important process to understand if you are looking to get into the data engineering world. So please watch the video until the end and without further ado, let's get started. Firstly, we can break any data engineering project into three phases. The pre-implementation phase, the actual implementation phase and the post-implementation phase. All these three phases are equally important for delivering a successful data engineering project. Okay, now before seeing about all these three phases in detail, firstly, let's talk about the different roles that will be involved across all these three phases. In the pre-implementation phase, most of the time, someone from the sales or commercial team will be involved. And from the technical side, often solution architects and data engineers will be involved. In the second phase, which is the actual implementation phase, someone from the infrastructure team often called as DevOps engineers or infrastructure engineers or platform engineers will be involved. And then of course, data engineers along with project managers will be part of this phase. And in the last phase, which is the post implementation phase, mostly data engineers and project managers will be part of this. So these roles are applicable for both product based and service based companies. The only difference here is the definition of the commercial or sales team would be different between these two companies. I'll explain what I mean by this in detail when we discuss about the pre-implementation phase. So as you can imagine, it is clear that a data engineer is not the only one who will be working on a real-time data engineering project. But the important part here is the data engineers is the only one who will be part of all these three phases when building a data engineering project from scratch. Okay, now let's get into the details of the different process that would be done in all these three phases. Firstly, let's see about the pre-implementation phase. In this phase, the key thing is to identify why a data engineering project needs to be done in the first place. As discussed earlier, the approach for this would be different when comparing a service-based and the product-based companies. In the service-based or consulting companies, this phase is also referred to as pre-sales. So what I mean by this is, we all know that the service companies work for the other organizations for delivering any kinds of software solutions, right? So the term pre-sales means winning the project contract to build a complete project for other organizations. Whereas in the product-based companies, they build the project for themselves based on their users needs and the business requirements. So both the service-based and the product-based work a little bit different in the first part of this phase. Firstly, let's see how your service-based companies operates in this phase. We can see this with an example. Consider there is a service-based company called Company A, and this company is an expert in building modern data platform for other organizations. So usually in this phase, there would be a salesperson from Company A who would approach to other organizations offering to build a modern data platform for them. This would also be a two-way approach Sometimes even the other organization would reach out to the company A directly considering their expertise in this field. So there would be an initial call that would happen between them to discuss about the problems they are facing currently and how a modern data platform can help them address their issues. And after this initial call, the salesperson from company A would reach out to someone from the technical team, oftentimes a solution architect and a data engineer, to discuss about the organization requirements and problems in a high level. In this stage, the technical team would have a rough idea about the requirements and they would analyze if they have enough expertise and resources available for helping the other organization. If it aligns with the technical expertise and resource requirements, the company A would reach out to the organization for another call. And this time they'd be talking a little bit more in detail in terms of understanding the organization's existing platform, the different data sources they have, their business needs and other technical details. 
By the end of this call, the company A will have all the information about the organization's requirements and then will have a catch up internally to discuss the next steps. This would be the final step of this pre-implementation phase. In this stage, the solution architect and the data engineer will work together on creating a modern data platform architecture for the new solution based on the organization's requirements. And then they would work on the platform cost, which means that after building the modern data platform for them, how much the organization would be approximately spending for the platform every month to the cloud providers such as AWS or Azure or GCP. And finally, they will be working on the coating documents, which will be the total cost the company A would be charging the organization to build the modern data platform with timeframes. And once this is done, all the required sales documents and contracts will be signed by company A and will be sent to the other organization. So when the other organization is happy about all the submitted details, they would countersign the contract and send it back to the company A. This final signature means the company A have successfully won the contract and this would be the end of the first phase, which is the pre-implementation phase. And now if you look into how the product-based companies operates in this phase, the only difference would be there will not be any other organizations involved and all the conversation will happen internally. Mostly all the initial conversation will be between the key business people and the other commercial team members. The requirements and the budget details will be discussed and this information will be then shared with the technical team such as the solution architects and the data engineers. And then pretty much the same process will happen similar to the service based companies in creating the architecture, estimating the platform cost and then estimating the total cost required to build the platform with time frames. So when this estimated cost comes under the budget requirements of the company, then the project will be kicked off, which would be the end of this pre-implementation phase. I think now you have a clear idea of the pre-implementation phase of the data engineering project in the perspective of both the service-based and the product-based companies. The next two phases, which are the actual implementation and the post-implementation phase, will be most probably similar between the service and the product-based companies. Okay, now let's move to the next one, which is the actual implementation phase. This is the phase where the project will be officially kicked off. And now I'm going to tell an interesting thing about the real-time data engineering project. When the project is kicked off, the data engineers will not be initially working on the project. Yes, you heard it right. A data engineer will not be initially working on a data engineering project in real time. Instead, the infrastructure team, such as a DevOps engineer, will be the one who start working on a data engineering project. The reason for this is, the first and the foremost step for any data engineering project is to set up the infrastructure. So what I mean by infrastructure is, setting up the environment, such as creating the different resources or tools required, such as Databricks, Data Lake, Data Factory, Synapse Analytics, etc and then configuring the security elements such as who needs to get access to what and also configuring the networking of all the resources created such as setting up the private endpoint, virtual machines and other infrastructure stuff. These infrastructure setup will be often done using the technologies like Terraform or Biceps templates. So as you have seen in all the available online tutorials of the end-to-end -end project, in real time, Nobody will go to the portal and create the required resources from the UI. Instead, all of these resources will be created using the scripts such as Terraform or Biceps. And this process is called as Infrastructure as a Code or IAAC. The main reason why we are using Infrastructure as a Code is the consistency. Since the same script can be used to set up the same infrastructure in different environments such as Dev, UIT and Prod. So these infrastructure deployments will be automated through CACD pipelines by the DevOps engineers. With the CACD setup, if you would like to make any changes to the infrastructure, then you can do it consistently across all the three environments, which is really cool. And only after the infrastructure has been set up in Dev, UIT and Prod, the data engineers will come into the picture. And now they can use the different resources that has been created by the DevOps engineers to start with the actual data engineering work. In terms of the data engineering work, the data engineers will build the complete end-to-end -end data platform as proposed in the solution architecture. 
They would use the modern data platform tools such as Databricks, Data Factory, Data Lake, etc. in the perspective of Azure or Apache Airflow, S3 Bucket, Databricks in the perspective of AWS. One important thing to note here is, all the development process will be first done in the dev environment and once it is done and properly tested in the dev environment, only then all the changes would be pushed to UIT and prod environment. So to automate this process, the data engineers would create individual CACD pipelines to deploy the changes. Say for example, there would be a CACD pipeline to deploy the Databricks changes and there would be another CACD pipeline created to deploy the Azure Data Factory changes. One important thing to remember is, this CACD pipeline is different to the infrastructure CACD pipeline. This CACD pipeline is specific to the individual resources such as Databricks or Data Factory to deploy all the notebooks or pipeline changes to the different environments. This would be usually created by the data engineers itself. Whereas the other CACD pipeline that we discussed earlier is specific to the overall architecture and this CACD pipeline will be usually created by the DevOps engineers. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so once the data engineers have built and tested the complete data platform solution in the dev environment, they would deploy all their changes to the UIT and prod environment using the CACD pipelines. So as soon as the changes are pushed to the prod environment, the data platform will be considered as live and they can do the further monitoring and testing in the prod environment. Finally, the data engineers would document about everything they have done so far to build this data platform and this is a very important step which would be very useful for anyone in the future. Another important thing to note is, throughout this implementation phase, a project manager will be assigned to manage the end-to-end -end implementation process. So in terms of the project management, there are different techniques project managers use to manage the project such as Agile methodology or the legacy waterfall model mostly based on the project requirements. The process involves setting up requiring meetings and planning sessions with the technical data engineering team. Here the project managers are responsible for tracking the work in terms of the budget and also making sure the data engineers are finishing their work on time. So this would be the complete process of the second phase, which is the actual implementation phase. And once the project is developed end to end, we will move to the next and the final phase, which is the post implementation phase. Let's see what would be the process in this phase. Cool, so this post implementation phase is also called as maintenance phase. Once the complete data platform is set up, there would be a need to properly maintain the platform such as to handle any unexpected issues or if you would like to implement a new additional feature, all those things will be done in this phase. For most of the big scale companies, this phase would be usually the largest one and it would be carried on for years. Also, there is a high chance that when you get hired as a data engineer in a big scale organization, you will be directly put into this phase for maintaining the existing data platform which is already built. One of the key things for any new joiners in this phase would be the documentation created by the data engineers who first developed it. With the help of the documentation and further knowledge transfer sessions from the senior colleagues, one would get an understanding about the existing data platform and will help in maintaining the data platform of the organization. To give you some idea of the work that you'll be doing in this phase, say for example, consider in the existing data platform, you have an Azure Data Factory pipeline that runs every day to do some operation. Consider a scenario where the pipeline failed this morning for some reason. Then the project manager will be notified about this and the project manager will then create a support ticket for your data engineer to debug and solve the issue. The data engineer will look into the pipeline failures fix it and run the pipeline again to process the data for that specific date. So this is just an example. Similarly, there would be different kinds of work that a data engineer will be doing in this post implementation phase. So since most of the data engineers will be part of just the third phase, many will not have any idea of the complete end to end process of how a real time data engineering project will be created from scratch. So that's the reason I wanted to talk about this. Also, if you are someone who doesn't have any data engineering experience, I hope this video must have given you a complete understanding of the overall process. If you are a fresher or an experienced professional who are looking to get into the data engineering world, 
Understanding this process is really important for you to perform well in your data engineering interview. So these are the three key phases of the data engineering project. If you found this video useful, please give a like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's it for today. See you in another great video. Until then, cheers. Bye.